many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. In the early 1890s, near Guilford, Oklahoma, daring whiskey runners traded in the Osage Nation. One of the worst troublemakers was a young woman from a squalid backcountry homestead, Jenny McCall, whose nickname Little Britches came from the only kind of clothes she ever wore. your family there's only two of us pause out someplace well tell him he's got a new border you wouldn't be from the RK ranch throwing ten dollar gold pieces around what do you mean bar K that horse you rode in I'm just traveling Looking for a place to hole up for a couple of days. You must be hiding out. Picking a place like this. I kind of like it here. It's miles from the road. I guess you wouldn't see many people. Not with your kind of money to spend. You didn't say where you got this. What do you care? Maybe I stuck up a train. You know, you'd be kind of pretty in a dress. I think I'm gonna kind of like it here. Yeah? If you're staying, we better do something about that horse outside. Come on. October the 3rd, 1893. We rode into Guilford, Oklahoma to investigate the train robbery which had taken place. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. Frankie Adams also worked for the railroad. She was assigned to the same job. Hello, Frankie. Matt, been looking for you. Hi, Marshal. Any news to hold up? No, the men split up. We haven't found them. Our report says they got $11,000. Most of it in gold. They held up the mail car while the train was still running. Jumped off in the middle of nowhere before anybody knew what was happening. Good country to hide in, they might still be around. Well, I was just going out. Got a couple of homesteaders I haven't checked up on yet. They might have seen the men we're after. Mind if we go along with you? <laughs> You're mighty welcome. I got this whole territory to cover and not half enough deputies. Come on. Hey, Casey, careful. You want to get burned? Come on, out this way. I'll get rid of him. This is Jeff McCall's place. Got a still around somewhere. Makes moonshine whiskey. Come on in. Hello, little Burgess. What do you want? Your father around? He's out hunting. Why? What do you want with him? Oh, just a couple of questions. Nothing you can't answer. Oh, uh, this is Miss Adam, Mr. Clark, from the railroad. Jenny McCall. Only most folks around here call her Little Bridges. We were wondering if you'd seen any strangers up this way. Not around here. There was a train robbed. The men split up and they're traveling without horses. We thought maybe you could help us. That sounds like your job. I'm not looking for trouble. We posted a reward. $500 for any information that'll bring them in. $500? Well, if they drop around for a social call, I'll let you know. What do you think you're doing? That's a lot of dishes for anybody eating alone. There's just Pa and me. There's work around here. I didn't get to them. Do you want to leave or you want to get helped? All right, let's go. And don't bring any more of your snooping friends. 
Have a warrant next time, or you'll ride home backwards, picking out buckshot. No use even talking to these homesteaders. They're all petty thieves. Straight cattle, horses, anything to get their hands on. I thought that was just talk. You saying you'd held up a train. What'd they ask you, honey? They didn't know anything. Just out around, letting people know there's a reward for tipping them off. You wouldn't be thinking about collecting that reward, would you, honey? Of course not, darling. Guess I'll have to leave now, whether I want to or not. I know the back roads. I could take you part way, wherever it is you're going. Let's see, today's Wednesday. I gotta meet a couple of guys in Diablo tomorrow. You better take this. You'll be needing it. You keep it. There's plenty more where that came from. It's too heavy to carry, so I dug a hole and buried it back down the canyon. <laughs> we can stop for him. I'll drive you that far. Look, why, why make it just part way? You and me could keep right on going. I'd take you places you've never seen before. Not places that are stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. Talking about big towns. We'd have plenty of money. We'd live like we owned them. Oh. What do you say, honey? You don't know my father. He'd follow us and skin me alive. Who says he'd know where to find us? Hey, Frankie. Morning, Matt. Hello, Frankie. Morning, Marshal. I'm making up some coffee for those reward posters. I'll have them printed tomorrow. Say, Marshal, the gal's run away. Stole my demon wagon. Left this note for me. Jeff McCall, Matt. Uh, Bridget's father. Hi. Hi, Jeff. Pa, I'm leaving. No use looking for me, Jenny. Well, it's up to you to find her. This is one time I'm asking favors of the law. Oh, she'll be back, Jeff. Girls are always running away. Well, she can go to blazes and stay there. I need my team. You know of any particular reason why she'd leave? Don't care what the reason was. Yeah, look. Look what she left me. Expects ten dollars to buy a new wagon and a team. Well, you couldn't buy a broke-down team of mules for that money. That's what they took in the robbery, Marshal. Gold pieces. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Train robbery, just south of here. You see anybody around your place, somebody who she might want to leave with? Well, I ain't been home for five days. How would I know? Say, you're going to find that team, Marshal? I guarantee you we're going to try, Jeff. <laughs> we'll try and find little bridges, too. Oh, dang little bridges. I want me horses. Looks like our first break, Matt. Yeah, I hope so. We ask everyone who traveled the roads had they seen a girl and a man on a wagon. Marshal. That driver just told me he saw a boy and a girl heading south through Canyon Pass. Canyon Pass leads to a town near the border. A tough little place called Diablo. Get your horse, Frankie. Let's go, Marshal. Hello, Dave. I don't see you carrying anything. It's right here. I'll be right back. Who's that, Dave? Well, that's just a partner of mine. With that dress. You sure look good. Yeah, I like it. I'd like to keep it. Give me some money. Well, I don't have any right now, honey. You go on back inside and I'll get the money and come back and pay for it. Okay. You're always picking up some girl. I brought her with me from Guilford. Homestead I stopped at. Yeah, I know. Of course, you know you'll have to send her back. Look, Kerwin, we could use her. She's got nerve. Runs whiskey for her old man. It won't work, Dave. I'm cutting in too many already. Did you 
you have a look at the bank? Yeah. It ought to be easy enough. The banker's alone most of the time. But how about the split on the last one? I'm keeping it until there's enough to buy out that freight company. Look, Kerwin, I'm fed up. You don't pay any of us enough. Don't talk to me like that. Look, I'm quitting. You can run it your own way, but I want what's coming to me. Look, Kerwin, I need that money. I need it bad. You're gonna get it bad. <laughs> Nice partner you got. It's not the end of this. We've been building up to this for a long time. Come on. Steve, the, the money for my dress. I haven't got it, honey. Kerwin wouldn't split. But we don't need him, baby. I guess I'll have to take it back. Go ahead. Tell her to hold it for a couple of days. Where are we going? To the bank to make a withdrawal. Now hurry. It's all clear. He's alone in there. I'm going in. And don't be silly. I'm the one who wants a dress. Cover me. Good morning. Good morning. Well. This is a holdup. Put the money in that bag. Never mind the silver. Diablo looked like a sleepy little town, but that shows how wrong you can be. It was ready to break wide open. Turn around. Put your hands up. Higher! came here to meet. I don't know what you're talking about. 
You knew Dave was carrying gold, lots of it. Did I? You left a gold piece for your dad. I'd hate to hear what he's going to say when he finds out about you. He beat the life out of me. I'm better off in jail. We want to know, Britches, what did Dave do with the rest of that gold? Why don't you ask him? I suppose we'll have to tell her. Your boyfriend, Dave, is dead. That's a lie. You're trying to trick me. Tell her, Marshal. That's right. We just brought the body in. Honest? She tied Belly down to that horse out there. You could make it a lot easier on yourself if you'd give us the names of the other men. Dave must have told you. He didn't. Honest. His partner. That's all he said. I loved him. <laughs> Calm you down if you have some coffee. I hope you choke on it. Wait. That's why you're getting out. Yeah. Put this on. It won't fit, but it might help a little. Cold wouldn't hurt. It's better than being in jail. Your trouble was in getting tied up with somebody like Dave. You sound like a marshal. You know, you could be useful. You've got nerve. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Thanks for the favors, but I'm riding alone. Where? Oh, I don't know. I got hurt once. That ought to be enough. Oh, now, listen. These holdups are small time stuff. It's only until there's enough to buy a freight wagon outfit that I've had my eye on for some time. <laughs> Holding up trains so you can have enough money to turn on us. <laughs> no, not exactly. This freight line has wagons, good ones. And I have ways of making money they never thought of. If we make any deal, it has to be one way. Yeah, I know. Strictly business. Kick up the fire. I closed the deal. We now own the Wood River Freight Company Lock, Stock, and Barrel. I'm hiring drivers the first thing tomorrow. Uh, think you can drive one of these things? <laughs> Try me and see. <laughs> and I said it had to be strictly business. Just look at me. How can you love a girl that looks like me? It's easy. Frank and I had been busy. We had talked to practically everyone in town trying to get a lead on Little Britches. Where have you been? I've got some news for you. Over to the telegraph office to pick up this wire. Britches was in town last night. How did you find out? 
The dressmaker said she was in to pick up a dress she bought the day the bank was held up. Paid for it with Mexican money. Mexican money. Listen to this wire just came from Washington. It's an official complaint from the Mexican government. Smuggled guns crossing border to insurrection is stopped. Authorities asked to cooperate on both sides of the line stop. Did you find out anything else? Well, the dressmaker said she bought two pair of heavy gloves. Wanted them to drive a team with. I checked with the landlady over at the rooming house. She said there was a girl that came in dressed like a man that stayed there several nights. Hmm. A girl her size driving a team? All I know, the landlady said she came tan through town like she was raised in wagons and had harness brass for teething rings. <laughs> that sounds like britches, all right. Mexican money. That's telegram. Gloves. You know, Frankie, it takes wagons to run guns. We're going to start checking every freight line in the county. Let's go. That won't be necessary. The landlady said the last time she saw her, she was driving a team for the Wood River Freight Company. Let's go. All the wagons pulled out about an hour ago on a regular trip to Mexican border. Let's go find the sheriff. I'll see about Kerwin. Come on. Kerwin was sentenced to hang on July the 8th, 1894. Jenny McCall lost the name Little Britches and was given a number instead. In the West, there were no jails for women, so she was sentenced to the Federal Reformatory in Massachusetts where she was released after serving three years. It wasn't long after her release that another old charge against her was brought to our attention. Little Bridges was wanted for questioning about a railroad holdup. The report said she was doing settlement work in the New York slums. We were sent to find her. Good soup tonight. There you are. Well, I'll be doggone. I still can't believe it. You better make sure, Frankie. Go ahead. Chicken sandwiches. I'm sorry, I... I was looking for somebody else. God bless you. It doesn't even look like a mat. Yeah, I guess you're right, Frankie. We'll never find little britches in New York. Just too big a town. 